Howdy everyone and welcome back. Uh, my name is Avram Plager and today we're going to be going over uh, one of the requests that was on my video tutorial about um, texturing in SolidWorks. Uh, so that request was to see how you can make a texture between uh, a chamfered surface between two cylinders. Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to be working to create this type of texture between two chamfered surfaces between uh, two cylinders. Uh, I think this technique works really well. Uh, it is slightly tedious, um, but it's a fairly straightforward process. Uh, so we'll begin by opening up a new part. And you can do that just by going to SolidWorks, New, and then just click Part, and OK. That'll open you up to a new tab here. Uh, from here, you're just going to create a sketch. And like you'd create any cylinder, go to the top plane, uh, create a cylinder. I prefer to do it from the origin, that way it's already got a set place to start from. You can make this any size you want, uh, but personally I like to work in pretty standardized measurements, so let's say just set that to 30 for right now. Uh, it doesn't really matter what size you make this, I just prefer to use standardized measurements. Uh, from here you can right click with your mouse and go to extruded boss slash base. And then here you can set it up to 60, millim 60 millimeters. Uh, for this, I do like to do um, twice the height of whatever the radius of your starting cylinder, of your starting circle was. That way you have a good bit of dimension to it. Once you get that, uh, just create a uh, chamfer here by clicking on the top circle there and going over to the features tab. Click on the down arrow below fillet and go to chamfer. From here, you can choose whatever looks pretty good to you so for this maybe go up to five uh, that's a decent chamfer and that's 45 degrees so that's all good so now we can click okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to create the second cylinder off of this chamfer so click on this face here and create another sketch and then click on the outer radius which is that bottom radius of the chamfer and click convert entities that will create a circle on your sketch plane that's the same radius as your first cylinder. And then go to extruded boss base. And it'll, it'll save the settings that you had from the last extrusion. So it'll automatically be at 60 millimeters, or it should be. Uh, and then you can click OK from there. Then go back here on this bottom cylinder, on this bottom circle face of this cylinder. Click that outer circle. Go back to features and chamfer that. And again, that'll save the settings from your last chamfer, five millimeters at 45 degrees. Amazing, we'll click OK. And that's our chamfered surface, really easy to set up. Now what we're gonna need to do is create a sketch plane that bisects these cylinders. And the way you're gonna do that is first, you do want to take this top face and make a sketch on it. And you're going to want to take a center line. A center line is a construction line, so it has no real effect on anything. You're going to want to go to, you don't want to hover over this top circle here until you get one of these yellow points. Click on one of these yellow points and go over to the other yellow point. There. And now you've got a construction line that bisects this top circle here. Now you can exit the sketch. And from here, you can go back to Features, go to Reference Geometry, select the plane. Your first reference is going to be this top face, and you want to make that perpendicular. And now, since it needs more, de more definition, you're going to select that construction line that you made earlier, and now it's fully defined. So it's a perpendicular plane to this face, and it bisects the cylinder. So now you can click OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch along here. And we're going to want to create uh, two sets of, uh, of construction lines. You can do this with one, but I like to create two just for a visual effect. But I'll just do it with one for right now to show you that it can be done with just one or two construction lines. So you're going to go to this corner here. And then go to the center corner here. And then create a horizontal line straight out. There you go. And now, just as a reference, we're going to want to create this angle here. And it's going to say make this dimension driven. We're going to click OK. The reason that this is driven 
is because that this construction line is fully defined, as is this one. The length isn't, but the angle to this line from this line is. Since this is horizontal and this is confined along this edge, this angle can't change anything in the sketch for right now. So it's going to be driven at 45 degrees, just so we know what that chamfer uh, angle is. Now what we're going to want to do is create the objects that we want to subtract from our cylinder from our chamfer to create that texture. So the ones that I like to use is just a uh, corner rectangle. You can really use either a corner rectangle or a circle. Uh, I'll just be showing how to use a corner rectangle just because that's the easiest shape for me to use for right now. And just create a rectangle out here. And the only two things you're going to want to do to this rectangle is take this top edge here, one of the side edges, and make them equal. Now you have a square. And now what you're going to want to do is make this square proportionally much smaller than everything else in the sketch. So make this about 0.1 millimeters. And that's good enough. Now we're going to want to do is zoom in a little bit. And we're going to want to get this in just a little bit there. And then that's good there. Uh, you just want a little bit of, uh, of it cutting into that chamfer. You don't want too much, otherwise it's going to look really weird. You just want a little bit in that chamfer, a little bit from the edge. This really is freehand. Because we're creating a texture, it really doesn't need to be a specific dimension. And that's good there. Now what we need to do is create a linear sketch pattern from this square out. So there we go. Since this is a really small square, going 10 millimeters is going to look way off screen. So set that to 0 0.1 millimeters. There we go. Now our second sketch cube is right there. What we're going to want to do is set this to 225 degrees. And this is the angle that it uh, circulates around the x-axis because it's going directly out from the x-axis. So if we were to take out this angle, it'd be again just directly outwards. So you know, if we did 45 degrees, it'd be straight upwards. So 225 is going to get us to that third quadrant there where we want it. And we do realize that we want this a little bit more centered, so we can do 0.05. Now these are a little bit closer together because we realize we don't really care about these squares intersecting. That doesn't really matter. What does matter is how much these intersect into the actual chamfer here. So I think that's good. Now what we need to do is create enough of these squares that they'll actually get to the end. So just click this until it gets to the end. Uh, and I'll cut and uh, resume the video when I, when I get to the end. And now we're back. Uh, so it took me about 140 of uh, these rectangles. I would, instead of just clicking this up arrow repeatedly, because you're going to get freaking cramps in your hand, uh, just take this number and use your numpad to enter in however many you want. And just keep incrementally increasing that number. You know, go to 200 and get in a big number. Go back down until you get back to where you need to. Uh, don't take too long with that. Uh, just kind of get a good estimate and then just go from there. Uh, and so you can see it has these uh, corners that go into our chamfer here. That's going to create that nice texture. Now what we want to do is that we have that. That's going to create all our squares for us. And it can slow the performance so... If you don't have a hefty computer, this may not work. Um, so there. Now you can see we have all of these squares. And what you're going to want to do is, before you take these squares and move them to the opposite side, uh, what you're going to want to do is only uh, get these edges that are protruding into our actual chamfer here. So what you're going to want to do is take one of my favorite tools, I absolutely love this tool, I use it a lot, is this Trim Entities tool. Uh, and now what we're going to want to do is trim out the outsides of these rectangles. So you can do that quite easily by just taking our tool and going along. And just going back and forth uh, with this tool. 
it really won't take very long. Um, but you just want to make sure that when you get to uh, the actual point of making this uh, go along the chamfer and uh, resecting the uh, the portions that are going to make this an actual texture, uh, you don't want this revolution to intersect itself. So just go along and take out those corners that intersect. Uh, you can go along and take out the big parts and then go in and clean up. And it really doesn't take very long at all. So I'll cut back to when I've properly cut all of those sections out. Um, and I'll see you all in just a second. Alright, so here we are back uh, with all of the ends trimmed from these squares. Uh, you can see we've got just a nice zigzag pattern. Uh, this is really good. Uh, and what we want to do is uh, take this and mirror it over to the other side. Uh, one thing I would recommend you do after you've uh, trimmed all those edges is rebuild by either clicking this, what looks kind of like a stop sign there, uh, go to rebuild or press control B. That will exit you from the sketch and then you can go, just click back on the sketch and you click edit sketch, it'll put you right back in. So now from here, what we're going to want to do is face our plane, uh, face our viewing plane right back to where we were before. And we're going to want to create a center line out from this middle point here. We're going to scroll in until we can find that middle point there, which seems like it's not really letting us. Um, but that is okay. Uh, once we have that center line there, um, and we know that this this point here kind of goes across that center line there, so we're all good there. Uh, now what we want to do is create a mirror entities. The entities to mirror are going to be all of these squares. So you're going to want to create your take your square select uh, and just go along, select all those squares. And once you got all that, like that, and make sure you select that as well. Uh, go to mirror about, click the box under there, and mirror around there. Once you got that, and you'll see if you don't select something, it'll uh, it'll it'll let you know that you didn't uh, do that. So you want to go to entities to mirror and reselect whatever you didn't select there. Uh, go to mirror about, and then reselect there. Once you got that there, you'll see you've got your uh, you've got your mirror component created. Now we can create that. Now we want to do is we can delete this here, and then we can delete those two lines there because we won't really be needing those. And what we're going to want to do is create one line between these two like that and that is our completed uh, profile for what we're going to be revolving around to uh, to create our texture so we're going to want to rebuild again uh, I would highly recommend rebuilding after any complex procedure and the last step before we go into actually creating that uh, that nice texturing on our uh, chamfer Last step is going to be to close this sketch by creating another line. Uh, you're going to go from this top point here all the way down to this bottom point here. There you go. And now you can see it'll create that nice blue highlight and that tells you that you've created a closed sketch object. Now what we can do is we can exit that sketch and we're going to create a reference geometry and we're going to create an axis on this uh, in this cylinder here. When you create that axis, it's going to auto. You can select like what type of um, of creation method you want. Since we have cylinders, easiest method is just select that cylindrical face, and it will auto select that cylindrical slash conical face feature for you. And then you can click the check mark for OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a revolved cut. 
I mean, just just select anything on that sketch, uh, just to start the revol the revolved cut. Our axis of revolution is going to be the axis we just created. So make sure you select that box, select that axis, and you can see now it's going to create that revolved cut for us. Now we can click OK. And with that uh, revolved cut, we have a very nice texture created on our chamfer face. There's a lot of lines created um, with a relatively simple method. Uh, this really is not going to be something you're going to 3D print. Uh, this is going to be something you use for a CNC machine. If you've got a part uh, and you want to create some texture between two chamfered surfaces for any reason, uh, this is the method that I best came up with. Uh, I recently saw a comment that was advising on a better method to do something in one of my videos. Um, again, if y'all have uh, advice for me and people in my people that are following me, absolutely please comment it. Uh, any any information on what I can do better is very helpful. Um, and if anybody has a better method for something that I'm doing, more than happy to have y'all comment that in the comments. Uh, with that, um, please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Uh, it very much helps me out. Uh, right now, it's about 2% of the people watching my videos are subscribed. Uh, so if you're watching my video and you do like my content, please subscribe. Um, and with that, have a good night, y'all.